is in the unique position of being able to hire himself as an actor. Not because he writes plays, but because he produces movies. Before he turned 30, he'd already co-produced three classy pictures. Joan Micklin Silver's Chilly Scenes of Winter, John Sayles' Baby It's You, and Martin Scorsese's After Hours. He didn't plan it that way. Although his father, Dominic Dunn, was a movie producer, like the boys in the band, Griffin started out like many New York actors the hard way. He moved to Manhattan as a teenager, studied at the Neighborhood Playhouse and HB Studio. I've studied there myself. Worked at Radio City Music Hall as a popcorn manager and scrambled for roles in off-off Broadway showcase productions like I Never Cried for My Mother. What was that play about, Griffin? It was this rotten play about Vietnam. I had to cry six times on stage. You know, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. I mean, I didn't know what to cry about to begin with, and after three times, you really have to fake it. Even if you're from the actor's studio, no one could cry six times in an hour and a half. I can see how that would be very challenging, definitely. Uh, six times in an hour and a half, well, I don't know. As great of an actor as I am, I don't think I could pull that off even, Griffin, so <laughs> I feel your pain. So, uh, well, how'd you get this production company started anyway? How'd that come about? Well, my acting wasn't taking off as I hoped, um, you know, like, like I was hoping it would, but I, I found out that I, I wasn't alone. I went to this party and I met a couple of other frustrated actors, Amy Robinson and Mark Metcalf, and the three of us decided to get together to develop projects for ourselves. Robinson brought in Ann Beattie's first novel as possible stage material, but uh, they quickly saw that it, it could be a movie, actually, and... Um, at that point, Triple Play Productions was born. And then I became the producer's prerogative, and so I basically cast myself in Chilly Scenes of Winter. I had a tiny scene, but it got laughs. And then Wilford Leach liked that scene a lot, so he cast me in Wally Shawn's Marie and Bruce at the Public Theater, and I've been working as an actor ever since. I gotta say, though, the two careers don't always mesh. When I was acting in Ted Talley's Coming Attractions at Playwrights Horizons in 1980, I read Talley's teenage comedy Hooters, and I, I thought it was so funny that I, I, w I was crying, literally crying with laughter. And two years later, I was cast in the play uh, just as um, Baby It's You was going into production, and somehow the humor had gone, maybe because I spent every rehearsal break off in the wings with a wad of quarters phoning agents, lawyers, and studio executives. Deal-making on an adult level made it really hard to go on stage and play a horny 17-year-old. Now, After Hours posed no such problems. That was my favorite acting job, um, really, I would say so far. Partly because I was working with Scorsese and partly because I was in every scene. And the latter was also true of American Werewolf in London. And that was the inspiration for Michael Jackson's Thriller video. But um, American Werewolf wasn't much fun. I, I don't like the makeup and the pyrotechnics, the spraying and the, the fussing. I was a walking sight gag. People always wanted to take me out to lunch. But I took it very seriously and sometimes I, I, I thought I'd made a mistake. That it was, you know, that it was bad karma to look like that. To play such a graphically victimized person. The makeup put me in character instantly. It was very depressing. If I thought about it too much, I'd get upset. I thought, this is exactly what I'd look like if I died. Uh, yeah, I can see how that would be, definitely. Well, Griffin, we're out of time, unfortunately. We only have so much time and uh, so much to do. It's unfortunate, but uh, i got to take off. I know you have other things you got to do. I wish you the best, man. Have a great day.